Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. I'm going to do a quick tutorial tonight about Revit and Twin Motion. Um, during one of my uh, episodes of BIM After Dark Live, uh, I mentioned that it wasn't possible to bring in a Revit object with its own base point. Well, thanks to a couple people and some testing of my own, it actually is. So I'm going to actually show you how to export objects from Revit into Twin Motion, keeping their own base points, and then being able to use the replace tool which is really, really cool, it's an extremely powerful thing to do. So let's jump right into it and we'll chat about it some more. All right, so where's, where's an opportunity where you might want to use this? Well, I have a scene here, um, which is this uh, back alley of a hospital, and you'll notice there's some cars moving around, etc. cetera. Um, but if you also notice that there's a bunch of parking strips, right? there's a bunch of parking lots around here, and so placing cars in Lumion and Twin Motion can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially if it's following topography or rotating around, etc. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring in placeholder objects and then use the replace tool to fill in these parking lots in a matter of seconds. And why is this important? Um, because if, if let's just say you had specific objects you wanted in a certain location, maybe you want trees that you're using a site plan within Revit, or maybe you want to place cars in a specific location, or maybe just whatever objects they may be, um, but you have twin motion objects, whether they're brought in from Turbo Squid or somewhere else, and you want the ability to place those objects in the exact same location without sitting there maneuvering and fidgeting around. Well, this is this is how you would do it. So I'm going to jump into my Revit file now, so you can see this is the actual Revit export for it. What you'll notice is that I have these cubes, right? So there's these rectangular cubes, and then there's these cubes over here. These are families that I created. Um, so those of you that are BIM After Dark community members, if you're not, check it out at community.bimafterdark.com. Um, you're going to get the sample files, so you'll get these families uh, as part of the sample files. But these are simple families. They're just generic models that have reference planes, and their base point is at the middle. And so if I jump into this design options, I'll show you what they look like. So you can see this one's called TM Placeholder Car. So when we do this process and we bring it into Twin Motion, it's actually going to come in with the family name. And so if I go into Edit Family, just so you guys see what they look like, and I go to my reference plane, you can see it's super simple. I didn't even bother putting parameters on it. If I wanted to, I could make it stretch and whatnot. But really, this is all it is. This is an object that has the base point right at the middle of it. Okay. So now if I jump back in here, the way Twin Motion's exporter works is that it's going to export whatever's visible in the view. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly select all these objects which have cars and uh, plants. You can see some of the trees there. <clears throat> I'm going to take uh, type HI on my keyboard, which is isolate elements. If I wanted to, I could dedicate a view to it, but there's no reason to. I'm going to go to Twin Motion. I'm going to go to Export. And so now by default, there's a few things that Twin Motion's exporter has on. We're going to change some of these. So you'll notice what it's going to do here is it's going to export whatever is visible, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. We don't really care about it exporting textures right now because it doesn't really matter. Um, and now this is important. Collapse by. So by default, it's set to material or family, I don't remember, but either way, you're usually going to use material or family. We're going to press none. So this is key. You need to make sure that you're collapsing by none. Okay. The mesh doesn't matter. Obviously, if there's MEP families, you want to make sure that that's not checked off, etc. But the key here is making sure that you say collapse by none. I'm going to click export. I'm going to throw this on my desktop for now. I'm going to call this placeholders. And now I just exported those. Perfect. So now, if I jump back over to Twin Motion, what you'll notice is that this, this site right here, this big site model, if I was to select it, you'll notice the base point for every object within this FBX is actually way out here. See that down in the distance there? So any one of these pieces, they come in individually, but notice their base points are way out there, and that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our file. So I'm going to go to Import. I'm going to click Import here. I'm going to click open and I'm going to select that file that I just exported which is right here placeholders now before I press import I want to make sure that where it says collapse I want to say keep hierarchy so two important uh, pieces here first is saying none when you're exporting from Revit and then when you're bringing it into FBX make sure you keep the hierarchy so now when I click OK I'm going to say OK for the materials you'll notice if I zoom down here all my little blocks are here, but there's a difference between what was happening before and what was happening now. Notice how when I pull down this, this export, hopefully you can read it, it says site. So now they're in the site category. That's how I made the family. 
and then each family has its own folder. Then within that, you actually have every individual family is there, and you'll notice every individual family has its own base point. All right? If I click this object, it does not. If I click here, it does. So what does that mean on twin motion side of things? Well, notice how I call these placeholder cars. I can actually just scroll down and I can shift select all the cars. So I just selected every single car that I placed in Revit with that little placeholder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say replace object. When I say replace object, what you're going to see is that I can place objects in this little box down on the bottom. And I can place as many objects as I want. So if I go over to cars and I just throw a whole bunch of cars in here, random cars. So maybe I want some of these and these. Okay. Now behind my head there, if I was to hide my head for a second, screen only, if I press start replacement, what it's going to do is it's going to replace all the objects with a random randomized generation of the ones in my library. So I click start, Ta-da, look at that. Now, just like that, I place cars in all the same locations as families. Trees, you can do the exact same things with trees. Cars are probably more important, but trees may be important too. Maybe you have trees in a very specific location. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna select all my trees. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say, replace object. I'm gonna roll up to trees. I'm gonna put three or four different trees in here. I'm gonna click start replacement. And now you see it places trees in the same exact location as all of those. Pretty cool, right? Super simple, extremely powerful. Okay, so again, that's export from Revit. Make sure you press none. And then import to Twin Motion. Make sure that you say keep hierarchy. Um, so if this was interesting to you, please subscribe to this channel. Um, I've got a YouTube live show every Thursday night. And um, I've also got actually a course on Twin Motion, a free course for you guys on Twin Motion. If you just head over to thetwinmotionkid.com or free.bimafterdark.com, all those things are going to get you to that area. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for those of you out there. And um, I'll see you again.